Alrighty, well, welcome back. So this is uh, where we left off on the last one. We got some really basic routing. We noticed in the schematic that we were missing a couple of important parts, so we put them back in there. So now I think the uh, the right uh, thing is to do a little bit of uh, cleanup. We're going to add uh, what's called a ground fill, uh, a plane fill. We can use that for a lot of different reasons. Um, but the, the whys and hows and the reasons and all that kind of stuff, I'm saving for later. Right now I'm just kind of giving you the overview of the process. So all I'm going to do right now, and this is super subjective, is I'm just going to kind of make some of these um, these traces just look a little bit nicer. Um, there's absolutely no real justification uh, for this, but I'm I'm moving uh, some of the little pieces and parts around um, so that uh, uh, so that they look better. So this one uh, you can see kind of I was trying to make like a, a, a different jog. So I can hit this little split right here and then perfect. So using the split command uh, in this one allows you to break up your your traces into multiple pieces. So here's what I can do. I can kind of get these nice and parallel. Again, this has absolutely no impact at all whatsoever in the functionality of this particular circuit. In some cases, um, the, the neat, well, in most cases, uh, as circuits get, uh, and layouts get more and more complicated, um, it does kind of help to keep things nice and neat because it keeps you as the designer from being confused in the process. So, let me save that. Okay, saved it. Um, so that's, you know, neat enough for uh, for what we're doing today. The next thing I'm going to do is add what's called a, um, a, a polygon pour. So I, I'm going to pick this little polygon tool, and that will allow me to fill up all of this black area with uh, copper. And in this case, I'm going to assign that copper to the ground uh, node over here. And um, let's do that right now. So polygon. We want this to be on the top layer. Um, we want it to be solid. Um, the width in this case, what it's talking about there is how. Um, well, you know, I'll tell you what. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick a number here, and I'm gonna explain that after the fact. Remind me if I forget. So I'm just gonna go around the board, make this polygon pretty close to the same size of the board, slightly bigger, and uh, we'll see how this behaves. So when I get all the way back to the end, I started on a grid point, and this is important, I guess, to note. Start at a snapped grid point because the end one has to snap to that exact same point. When I click this one, it's asking me, what signal name does that want to be? I want it to be ground. Okay. And it's connected that to make it um, solid. So the next time I go over here and hit uh, the rat's nest button, it automatically fills this in, fills every available space in, with copper. And if we look really closely over here at our ground connections, it made these things right here. So that the way this is connected, these are called thermals and uh, fun, fun topic. Um, so the solder uh, pad right here, it made little connections to the, um, to the solder pad. It made four connections to each one of these resistors. So the ground is connected all over. And if I go to the eye, and I select uh, ground, look, all of this stuff is connected to ground. So actually the, the PCB manufacturer only has to remove the copper uh, from those layers. And uh, a ground fill from an electrical perspective on a lot of circuits is a good idea. So great, so we've got the, the copper part um, uh, pretty pretty much settled. Um, and I, I want to see what this is going to look like in real life. So in, in real life, um, I do not want the values. So those can go away. That's pretty hilarious because I've got this, this thing is all goofed up. Um, everything else we'll see. If I go to the little manufacturing tab, it shows me a preview of what this thing is going to look like. And you know what? It isn't that bad except that uh, the switch is called U$1. So I'm like, eh, we're going to get rid of that. Um, so let's do that uh, right now. Let's uh, go back to the schematic. And the switch is named right-click name. U dollar sign one, so let's make this SW one. That's that's a little bit better. So let me go back over to our board. Yay, SW one. I love that. But I'm going to go to move. I want SW one to be kind of in the center. It doesn't matter. 
If you wanted these things to be off to the side like this, that's great. Um, this one can be off like this. It doesn't matter if this text goes over the, the trace right here, because there's going to be solder mask there, and ultimately you won't know. Um, but the, the size of the text, right now the size of the text is relatively small, and it's thin. So it's there's it's probably below the ability for you know a cheap board house to print that so if i click properties it's like yeah you know what the size isn't bad but this ratio is how thick the line is so let's go with something like a i don't know 15 percent now it made this a little bit thicker it's going to be easier to print and we want the others to look the same so we'll use the paint roller and when i click on that one it's asking me, oh yeah, you can copy all of these attributes. Great, but I don't want the angle. I want all this other stuff though. So I'll click on that one, that one, that one, uh, this one, uh, this one, and that one. And then, oh, and pad one and pad two. So pad one and pad two, those have terrible names as well. Um, so again, back to the schematic. Let's name these suckers. Uh, name. Pad one. No, we want this one to be uh, plus five VDC. Doesn't have to be the same as the net. This is purely descriptive. So we want plus five VDC there, and we'll right click this one and say name, and we'll call this one ground. Like spell it out. Um, and in this case, we can move those things out of the way too, because it's got just too much uh, muck. So I moved that one kind of out of the way, but honestly, I don't even want that at all. There is nothing wrong in the schematic with saying delete because I pretty much never want to see that so I'll delete that one as well and then I can move this one to a uh, better spot and that one to a better spot now keep in mind I was alt dragging those to uh, uh, kind of finally uh, place those things the LEDs again U dollar sign two that wasn't set up very well um, when I made the parts uh, and we're paying for that now, but for now we want to call this one uh, name. We're going to call this D1, and we want this one to be D2. And you cannot, you, you have to change all of this data in the uh, schematic. You can't change this in the board layout. So right click on that one, name, D3. Great. So now I've got um, useful uh, useful names for all these things and again this LED PLCC2 I don't really care about that so delete delete and delete so in the process of cleaning up our schematic we have also cleaned up our board now the LED PLCC thing um, is independent on the board so I'm going to right click that one and say delete I simply don't want it there perfect and uh, do we really want the um, the diode names to be there. Yeah, it's not going to hurt, but just for the sake of demonstration, we'll put these on the edge. We want D D2 there, so right-click rotates. And click this one right on the origin. Right-click it rotates. Awesome. And this 5VDC is running into ground. We don't want that. You can get a better view of it right here. Ah, that's terrible. So let's grab that one. We're still in the move command. Great. So let's put, you know what, we'll just kind of offset them a little bit. We're just kind of goofing off. So I think that down the road you can figure out which one is which. And we get our little preview. Ah, this is a, you know, it doesn't look so bad. Let's say we love this. Let's make it. I'm going to save it. Um, so we've got all this stuff here. So when when you love your design, you're like, ah, it's time to make it. The next step um, is to prepare uh, the Eagle data to be uh, viewable, readable, and usable by any uh, board house manufacturer. And the industry standard way of doing that is generating a package of files called Gerbers. So if we go up here uh, to this little icon, it says CAM processor. And it's going to pull up this little window. And right now it's pulling up the default template uh, for two-layer you know, CAM. Um, I'm going to demonstrate this with, with my own. Um, and I can I can share this with anybody who wants it. I don't really care. Uh, so let's see. Let's see uh, two layer, yeah, two layer. All right. So this is one that I developed um, on my own. I'm going to make this bigger. So what you see here um, are these are all the individual files. Every layer of the circuit board, every process essentially gets its own individual file. 
So I'm not going to go too much through the uh, CAM processor because it's a pretty big topic overall. But effectively what you see over here, uh, these are all the files that are going to be output. This is a preview of what they're going to look like. This area right here is what dimensions are contributing to that. The output file names and all that kind of stuff. And if you look really closely up here, it says export is zip. So it's going to create all these files, zip them, and put them into the folder uh, that, that you chose. So if I click on these, it gives me a preview. So here are the two drill holes that uh, align with the um, where we're going to solder the wires. That's the outline of the board. It's created by the dimension layer. Um, the top copper, so this is the, defines the copper, and that's made up uh, with uh, layer 1, which is top. But it also includes uh, layer 17 pads and layer 18, which is the uh, vias. So if we turned off 18, it would take out <laughs> this little area here where the, where the pads are. And of course, that's that's no good. So the bottom side has nothing on it except for the, uh, the pads and the vias uh, from the holes. I probably would have put a copper on there um, if I had to. This is the silk screen. So this is what's going to be uh, visibly printed um, on top of it. The solder mask, uh, solder mask bottom, uh, the stencil, uh, all of these things. These are all great topics uh, for a future thing. So long story short here, I'm going to hit the little process button. And it says, hey, where do you want to go? And that's, that's where I left it. Great. It opened uh, or it processed successfully. I'm going to open that folder. And there's our zip file. So I'm going to say unzip that, unzip, extract it to that folder. Great. So here's what we get. These are all the individual files. Um, and the uh, the extensions uh, are defined kind of down in here. So this is DRD is drill, L1 is for layer one, layer two, the outline, the silk screen, solder mask bottom, all that kind of stuff. But the very last thing we have to do is open up a, uh, a Gerber viewer, independent of Eagle, just to test all this stuff. I'm, I've been using Gerb V, and there's a couple of them that I use, but this one is really simple for uh, quick and dirty stuff, Gerb V. Um, I'll see if I can get the link to that in the comments. Um, open layers. Great, let me... Uh, can't remember if I put this in here or not. Uh, where did I put it? Uh, projects. Sorry, I'm having to find the uh, the files in my maze of files. All right. So let's, let's see. I'm going to click that one and shift click here. So I'm going to open up every single one of those Gerber files. It automatically reads them. And there's that error message here, but I don't really care for now. So here are all the layers. I'm going to right click that and say turn it off. So now I can see each layer individually. Uh, there's there is no bottom silk. Uh, there's the two drill holes, there's layer one, and I can cycle those on and off to make sure that they line up. Uh, there's a lot of reasons that they wouldn't. Um, there's layer two, the outline of the board, it matches everything. There's a silk screen, everything is lined up there. Uh, the solder mask top, perfect. The solder mask is on the pads as we would expect. Uh, that's great. And, um, and there, this is the, the stencil. So the Gerber looks great. And uh, at this point, I would feel confident sending this off to, uh, you know, any of the uh, bazillions of uh, board houses. And generally, you send the zip file all by itself. And the zip file uh, only is it's it's just enough information for the board itself. There's no superfluous information about your design intent or what components you're using and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, for this, who really cares? You know, for my designs, I really don't want to be sending, um, you know, all my design data to every single board house, especially the cheap stuff that I'll do in China or whatever. Um, so this kind of obscures a little bit about what you're doing. But I think more importantly, outputting Gerber's um, it's uh, like I said earlier. It's uh, something that you can't um, you can't misinterpret. The board house really would struggle to uh, misinterpret this and, and and not make it right. So there it is. We got all the way to the end of of a, a single circuit board. All of this stuff. I'm skipping a thousand steps, a thousand details, which um, I look forward to going to going through in the future. I'm going to be picking out some topics uh, to go into more detail on. But for now, at least you can see the entirety of the process, and uh, we'll move on to uh, start to get into some of the uh, intermediate um, and uh, more specific stuff shortly. So we'll see you soon.